Right, we are back with our friend, the fat electrician. Come and on. Today we are checking out U.S. Navy's unluckiest ship with an untouchable crew, USS William D. Porter. I don't know nothing about Navy. Personal babies. I don't know nothing <laughs> about fucking Navy or Air Force. So this is always a learning experience i want to know this is this is something that i would i was always wondering is like, how does he find these stories because i from what i understand he's was an army medic right so how do you how do you go about learning i don't know it's intriguing because army guys were army centric i've never spent a second thinking about the other branches of what they do what they've done their history so it's it, like how you pick these gems out man that's, that's could be from research on the internet and maybe other commenters uh maybe pointing out people in history u.s military history that really haven't been talked about that's why what, what i hope because i'm like where are you getting these that's crazy so i'm here for it i don't know anything about this so let's go let's find out three two one Ah, uh, yes, the time the USS Iowa got a jacuzzi tub installed in it, and then like two days later, an American destroyer shot a torpedo at it. <laughs> and today we're talking about the ship that shot that torpedo. Ladies and gentlemen, the unluckiest ship in U.S. naval history, the USS William D. Porter, unaffectionately nicknamed the Willie D. But first, a word from our sponsor, because this video is brought to you by... <gasps> Me, in a quack bang print Hawaiian shirt, because we have a bunch of new merch over at the merch store, and I just started a Patreon where I'm going to be posting hey. all the deleted scenes from these videos, and a bunch of other behind the scenes content. So if you wanted to check that out, it's all over at thefatelectrician.com, head there after the video, which we're going to get back to right now. Alright, important background info, okay, the hold on, hold, on, hold up, hold up, hold up, let me run this back a bit. That Bro. Hawaiian shirt. Bro, you gotta get that. I need that. <laughs> I need that, get that bad. <laughs> you gotta get that like yesterday, man. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> I I I think I'll take a little visit to that store when payday comes. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I still want my my uh warheads on foreheads and it's not a war crime the first time. Yeah. Shirt. Yeah. So we might we might go send Nick some love over on, yeah. on his merch shop soon. Heck yeah. And y'all should too. It is linked down oh, yeah. below. Yep. Yep. There after the video, which we're going to get back to right now. All right. Important background info. The Willie D is a Fletcher class destroyer. If you don't know, right after the attack on Pearl Harbor, America decided, hey, we need a bunch of more naval power if we want to fight this war. So they basically had two options of how to go about that. Option A, they could do what the Germans and the Japanese were doing by creating a couple of warships that were like really, really good, supposedly, you know, like they're going to have a bunch of armor and a bunch of firepower and they're going to be unstoppable and huge and blah, 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 blah. Or option B, they could go with the tried and true American strategy of accuracy by volume you can have one really big really powerful warship or you can have a shit ton of pretty good warships and just overwhelm the enemy with sheer numbers okay oh it's kind of like that decision that you make it's like every time we check out a live concert reaction that is your reaction yeah. oh my god look at how many it's like well yeah it's just anxiety inducing when i see numbers like that i'm just like fuck like that's just it's just like I couldn't imagine, mm -hmm. and that's it. I love, I love this man saying he just dumps, he not dumps it down, he breaks it down, baby bop style. He's like, look, accuracy by volume, just like, yeah. hey, there's enough of us, there's yeah. enough ships in the water, someone's gonna get the job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, he was gonna say a joke. I'm gonna run that back. Yep warships and just overwhelm the enemy with sheer numbers okay it's kind of like that decision that you make at 2 a.m when you're drunk and you call Domino's and you're like hey can I get a large pizza and the guy on the other end of the line is like yeah I can give you one large pizza or hear me out I can give you like 57 medium pizzas for the same price America's picking the 57 medium pizzas every time okay <laughs> yeah. we've been there yeah all the time mm -hmm. all the time a lot of uh <laughs> I've I've worked at a Papa John's before. That was like my first job ever. No. And yeah, we've done that before. We've nope. had a lot of either pizzas that didn't get picked up or we baked too many or something like that. Yeah. And we're just trying to get rid of them and make it so that we don't have to take them home and get fat. You know? There you go. There you go. <sighs> 
not picking up what i'm putting down the fletcher class destroyer is quite literally the sherman tank of the ocean okay america built a ton of them which you know good that's a great strategy the only problem with making a bunch of new warships though is that you're going to need a bunch of new sailors and new sailors don't always have a ton of experience and that is where the story really begins so once upon a time july 6 1943 the uss william d porter gets commissioned and put into service we now have a brand new warship being crewed by presumably a bunch of rookies and they're in need of their first mission it's probably Probably gonna end up being something pretty easy you know where all the new guys can get their feet wet get some experience build their confidence up something along those lines you would think but no absolutely not we're gonna go ahead and send them on a super duper top secret mission where they are gonna help escort the USS Iowa across the Atlantic Ocean to North Africa you know the same Atlantic Ocean that in 1943 was infested with German U-boats that were sinking hundreds of ships and just to be clear this mission is so secretive that nobody even involved in the mission knows what's going on until it's already happening this is like the Snoop Dogg or Willie Nelson of secret missions okay this is the highest level of secrecy <laughs> that you can achieve why is it so secretive because on the USS Iowa is going to be FDR the president his entire Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Secretary of State and they're all oh going over so they can attend the Cairo yo you're you are transporting the president and everyone else that would be president if it was shot down wow that yes. is a, that's, that's an all-in move dude yeah he, it, oh my god wow oh my god i would yeah i would be sweating bullets to mm -hmm. know that basically the 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 heartbeat of the u.s government is just chugging along through the atlantic ocean you know that what no no germans patrol the the atlantic ocean you know no, what I mean? not at all oh my god dude oh my shit oh god Oh my God! Wow, right. that's your first mission is to escort the president of the U.S. Like that's oh, okay. Oh my God! Row and Tehran conferences where they're going to meet Stalin, Winston Churchill, Shanghai Shack, all the leaders of the different countries that are going to fight the Axis powers. And my favorite factoid of this entire mission is that the crew of the USS Iowa had no idea that they were going to be escorting the president, but at the same time they had to make certain accommodations for the president before he showed up, including installing a jacuzzi tub in his quarters. So for a period of time, there was a bunch of new sailors looking around like, why the fuck are we getting a jacuzzi tub installed on our battleship? This is awesome. And then like a week later, FDR shows up and the whole crew's like, oh, well this makes way more sense now because obviously FDR can't really shower. He's gonna need a bathtub because you know, he's got that water polo injury or whatever happened to him. <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> that's how that's how it is. That's how it is. Like what is yeah. that? You know that water he got hurt doing water polo. Oh, you mean polio? Like oh no 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 water polo. 100%. Yeah. I I have a joke that oh. I like to say um what FDR real his true catchphrase was, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And staircases. And staircases. That last part always gets chopped off, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, those things are oh. scary, scary staircases. <laughs> Fucking staircases. <sighs> Jesus. Anyways, so the Willie D goes to leave port for the very first time to meet up with the USS Iowa, and while backing up, they forgot to bring the anchor up all the way and proceeded to scrape the life rafts and a bunch of other equipment off of the destroyer next to it, and then they bumped into like two more destroyers just trying to get out of the harbor. Oh my god. So they set out yep. on this super secret mission escorting the president across the Atlantic. It's the USS Iowa being escorted by three destroyers, including the Willie D and two escort carriers. Now, while they're traveling, they have to have complete silence to be as quiet as possible to not get detected by U-boats. And that includes not using the radio. Absolute radio silence. You have to communicate using signal lamps instead. So fast forward, we're like 24 hours into this eight day long mission. Everything is going great. Then suddenly they hit a rough patch of ocean and the Willie D apparently didn't strap down all of their depth charges. And one of them just 
rolls off the ship into the water and fucking explodes. Oh. Okay, now the crew of the Willie D knows exactly what happened, but all the <laughs> other ships have no idea, and all they know is that there was a huge explosion underwater near the boat that the president is on. Everything went from zero to DEFCON holy shit like that. So they're thinking they're getting attacked by German U-boats. They break out into evasive maneuvers. Everybody's running to their battle stations, getting ready for a fight. And then the Willie D hops on the signal lamp and we're like, sorry, that was us. The whole radio silence thing actually comes in pretty clutch for the Willie D right here because since they can't talk on the radio, Command has no idea of actually figuring out what happened. They're not going to know that somebody just forgot to ratchet strap down the depth charges. And they also can't get chewed out via signal lamp. So the whole conversation was pretty much just that. Hey, that was us. We're not getting attacked. The end for now. And since this is the first of eight days on this voyage, there's a good chance that everybody's just going to forget that this happened and we can all move on. Fast forward two days, we're now on the third day of the eight day voyage and the USS Iowa goes full dog and pony show mode and they decide they're going to release a bunch of weather balloons to be able to shoot their anti-aircraft guns at to show off for the president. So they get all these weather balloons up in the air and then they proceed to let them float all the way across the continental United States from Montana to the coast of South Carolina before they shoot them down with an F-20 raptor wait that's the fucking wrong story <laughs> please let us know which one that is uh something about weather balloons and raptors you know i yeah. think that was that was i think was that minnesota was not up there yeah the yeah the chinese one yeah the chinese one <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, so the USS Iowa opens fire with their anti-aircraft guns, they're taking out all these weather balloons, FDR is super impressed, but then there's a huge gust of wind and it blows a bunch of these weather balloons out of range and over towards the Willie D. At this point, the Willie D is like, oh shit, this is our chance to redeem ourselves. Quick, man those anti-aircraft guns, we gotta take out these balloons. And that's exactly what they do. They start absolutely destroying these balloons. They popped every single one of them. They did a terrific <laughs> job. So they pop all these balloons. The crew of the Willie D is just amped. They've totally redeemed themselves. Everybody's gonna forget about that depth charge thing now. This is the best day ever. So the commander decides not wanting to lose all of his crew's motivation. They're also gonna do some torpedo drills. Keep boosting up their morale, you know? So when you do a torpedo drill, you send the torpedo guy down and he takes the primers out of the torpedoes in the torpedo tube so that when you fire the torpedo for the drill, it doesn't actually launch the torpedo. So the chief torpedo officer goes down, takes all the primers out of the torpedoes, gives a thumbs up that they're good to proceed with the exercise. The commander of the Willie D then picks a target. Now, bear in mind, he's trying to improve his men's confidence and morale. And what are you gonna do if you want them to score a hit? You're gonna aim for the biggest target, right? Give them the biggest opportunity to succeed that you can give them. So they aim at the USS Iowa, you know, the ship with the president on it. So oh, the crew no. takes aim with the torpedo tubes. Commander gives the order, fire torpedo number one, click. Torpedo stays in the tube, nothing happens. They wait a few minutes, they're like, oh, hey, we scored an imaginary direct hit. Good for us, terrific. Commander gives the order again, fire torpedo number two, click. Nothing happens. Wait a few minutes. Oh, hey, we scored another direct hit. Commander gives the order. Fire torpedo number three. Chief torpedo officer, fire fucking what now? <laughs> The Willie D has now just fired a live torpedo at the President of the United States and they have anywhere between three and five minutes before that thing hits the USS Iowa. What do you do? Obviously, you radio over to the Iowa and say, uh, you need to move right now. But we can't do that because we're under orders to maintain radio silence, remember? And if we break radio silence, some German U-boat might come out of nowhere and shoot a torpedo at the President. So they decide they're not going to use the radio, which is like not calling the fire department when your house is on fire because they're gonna show up and get shit wet like sometimes you just have to fight fuck ups with fuck ups okay but whatever so they decide they're not going to use the radio they're going to use the signal lamp instead so this poor what i presume to be an 18 year old kid that was probably in high school six months ago climbs up on this signal lamp probably having the worst panic attack of his entire life knowing full well that if he messes this up he very well may be partially responsible for killing the longest sitting president both literally and figuratively in american history and the <laughs> oh, the FDR jokes. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. All this intense story 
And yeah, another FDR joke. Oh, God. Uh, oh, dude, love that. I needed that at this moment. I needed that. <laughs> Netflix, oh, that. if you do not pick up Nick, oh. the fat electrician, for a comedy special, oh, man. you are out of touch with comedy. Oh, my God. That was great. That was brilliant. <laughs> that was really the longest sitting president, literally and figuratively. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I'm here. I'm here for it. Yeah, he sits longer than Biden takes to uh, think of a question, a, 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 a sentence. Pretty much. Dude. And I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I had another one to even it out. He sits longer than Trump's court appearances. Oh, dude, Come on. Make, uh, it even. Make it even. Uh, yeah, I didn't have to. Um, um, dude, could you imagine? Could you? Oh, dude. I like listen. I've I've yeah. been around. I've been around when when people fucked up, right? I've been around when people fucked up in mm -hmm. in massive fuck ups. Uh, <laughs> while the while the 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 higher ups are watching, and it's uh, like, shit. Oh my Everyone's God. just like, fuck. That's a big come to Jesus moment. You're like, oh no, mm -hmm. oh no. And this is even worse. You shot at the. That's an. It's an you assassination shot. attempt on the president. A whole battleship fired on the press. Oh my god! I love that. I love that. That that yeah. that torpedo commander must have just shat himself when he <laughs> heard that thing go whoosh. He's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like communication, and the guys. <sighs> communication breakdown. That's yeah. some, that's what the military is. And oh. and you caught him while he was sitting down. The audacity. The audacity, man. Oh, okay. All right, let's finish the story. Oh, my God. Panic Attack is starting to get the best of him because he's up there like one if by land, two if by sea. How many fucking lanterns do I have to hang to signal, don't move, there's a torpedo coming at you? So the commander of the Willie D tells this kid, signal the Iowa, tell him there's a torpedo coming towards you. The kid sends a signal, the Iowa gets a signal, and it reads as, and I quote, there's a torpedo moving away from you. So now the Iowa's super confused. They signal back. They're like, what? So the commander of the Willie D tells this kid, fuck it, just signal the Iowa, tell him to back up. Kid sends a signal, the Iowa gets it, and it reads, and I quote, we're backing up, meaning the Willie D is backing up. So the Iowa's sitting there like, there's, there's a torpedo moving away from us, and the Willie D is backing up. I think they're getting attacked by a submarine right now. So they uh signal back. Where's the submarine? After hearing this, the commander of the Willie D finally comes to the realization that he would rather be the guy that broke radio silence than be the guy that killed the president of the United <laughs> States. So he picks up the radio and calls over to the Iowa. He says something along the lines of Lion, Lion, which is the Iowa's code name. Emergency torpedo in the water, turn right. The Iowa doesn't know who's talking to him. So they're like, say again, who is this? And he's like, it's the commander of the Willie D fucking turn right or you're gonna get hit by a torpedo. So they bank right. At this point, all hell breaks breaks loose on the USS Iowa because there's a torpedo coming towards them and they have the president on board. Everybody's running around like chickens with their heads cut off. At this point, FDR decides he's going to be a complete gangster, just straight up hold my blanket, orders his secret security guys to wheel him up to the railing because he wants to make eye contact with this torpedo as it shoots the USS Iowa. And in his own diary later on, he would go on to write about how he personally saw that torpedo miss by only a thousand feet. So the torpedo missed, the crisis is averted, but the only problem is now Willie D is the only ship that knows what actually happened and all the other ships are still looking for a submarine that attacked the USS Iowa. So the Willie D has to radio over and is like, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was us. Sorry. <laughs> At which point, the USS Iowa takes all three of her turrets, nine 16-inch guns, and turns them and points them at the Willie D. The Willie D is then ordered to leave the group, sail back to Bermuda by themselves where they're going to get investigated because they just tried to kill the president. And what happened next is kind of debated. One story goes that the Marine Corps boarded the Willie D and arrested the entire crew, making it the first and only time in U.S. naval history that an entire crew got arrested. Some people think that that didn't happen because it wasn't in the Willie D's official war diary, but you also have to remember that this was already a super secret mission and this was fucking embarrassing. I mean, the government didn't release this to the public until the late 1950s after World War II, so oh, it could have God. actually happened and the U.S. government covered it up because, you know, the U.S. government covers up all kinds of shit all the time. 
But what we do know for sure is that the chief torpedo man that failed to remove that third torpedo primer got sentenced to 14 years of hard labor, or at least that was until FDR decided to be a complete gangster yet again, because apparently he found the entire almost assassination attempt thing funny and decided to pardon him. So that was that. The president stepped in, said it was fine. Now the Willie D got sent over to the Northern Pacific. They had to make their way through the Panama Canal up the West Coast. Now they're operating off the coast of Alaska and around the Aleutian Islands. They're there for about a year. Wow. They got off really well. Wow, like, man. You you almost killed the president and your, your sentences go to Alaska. Yeah, I, I love that, though. I love that. The president was such a G. He was like, that's pretty fucking funny. Like, <laughs> you know, but, you know, at that time, you know, at that time, you had to be able to, like, be flexible with some shit because th you needed all the boats. You needed all the people. You yeah. needed every able-bodied person to fight for the team. So yeah. it's the, the punishments were not dished out. Like look at what, what was his face? Was it um, fixed bayonets? And that yeah. guy, was it him who got, who went over there preemptively and then got court martialed and was like, hey, since I'm not in the military anymore, can I just join the military? They're like, you got it. Uh-huh. Right, yeah. Back he, in the fight. Did the found the loophole, the yeah. little reverse card there. Yeah. Here and everything goes great. They do a bunch of training. They go on a couple missions doing anti-submarine work. They do some shore bombardments. Everything goes according to plan and it's perfect. Then they finally get the word that since they're performing so well, they're going to get sent over to the actual Pacific Theater and they're going to be fighting in the Philippines and eventually the Battle of Okinawa. Like this is where the real fighting is going on and these guys are pumped to be sent there. So just to reiterate, like they've done their time, they put a lot of hard work in, they're starting to redeem themselves, they're getting another shot and they're about to leave the Northern Pacific. What do you think they do? They throw a party, obviously, break out the booze, we're going to have one big party before we actually go off to war. So they all get hammered and somebody has the bright idea. You know what we need? Some fireworks. Load a round in one of the five inch guns. We're going to fire it. And that's exactly what they do. And sure enough, that five inch shell makes its way to land. And not only does it hit land, it hits the military post that they were operating out of. <laughs> and on that military post, it landed in the front yard of the commander's house while he was having a party full of all the other high-ranking officers. Ah! This is also another event that wasn't documented in the official war diary, so it clearly <coughs> could not have happened. But Okay, I've said this once. Yo. How unlucky can you get? Yo. <laughs> Yo, just quit, dude. You're, yeah. If you're assigned to this ship, just be like, how many court-martials? Yes, all of them, please. Oh, my God. That's that's what you call a Monday right there. That's a Monday ship. A USS yeah. Monday, dude. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> Wasn't documented in the official war diary, so it clearly could not have happened. But okay, I've said this once and I'll say it again. Just because something is not in the official log doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Anybody that's been in the military or worked a blue collar job knows that whenever anything goes wrong, the first thing you do is look at the highest ranking person there and say, can we fix this without having to tell the boss? And that's exactly what happens 100% <laughs> of the time. And in this particular, like I've never been in the military, but I've worked uh, CDL jobs and yeah, there's some stuff that gets swept under the rug for, yep. uh, for purposes. Yep. Yep. Exactly, man. Oh my God. Killer case. The commander that had a shell land in his front yard had two choices. He could a pull their orders to go to the Pacific so that he could launch an investigation and try to get people in trouble. That's going to take two years of his time and cause him a huge headache and a bunch of paperwork, or he can just sweep it under the rug, pretend it didn't happen. Those guys already have orders to leave like this week, and they're just not going to be his problem anymore. What would you do in that situation? So the whole shooting a five inch naval gun into the commander's front yard deal gets swept under the rug and the Willie D gets sent off to the Philippines to fight in the war. And unfortunately for the crew of the Willie D, absolutely no one has forgotten the fact that they shot a torpedo at the president because every time the Willie D gets anywhere near another U.S. ship, they radio over and say, don't shoot, we're Republicans, you know, because FDR was a Democrat. But despite their past... <laughs> <sighs> uh, oh, shit, I love that. <sighs> You know, uh, but that's the kind of banter that it's 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 
just expected in the military. Yeah. Like, yeah, bro, you took a pop shot at the president with a torpedo. Yeah, we're not gonna forget about that, man. We're gonna have fun with it. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. You gotta have this, fun with it. We're Republican. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And then the Willie D's just like fucking a dude every time. Uh, <laughs> oh god <laughs> wow. and despite being made fun of they actually start kicking ass they get put on anti-kamikaze duty and start doing a really good job they shoot down a bunch of would-be kamikazes they send a lot of radio transmissions letting people know that kamikazes are inbound they're really starting to turn it around fast forward to the battle of okinawa one of the largest naval battles of world war ii i believe the largest amphibious landing in the pacific theater during world war ii and yes the battle where the yamato gets sunk is that relevant to the story in any way whatsoever absolutely not but i'm gonna bring up the yamato being a coral reef every chance i get for the rest of my life sorry battle of Yay. okinawa willie d is on anti-kamikaze duty and sure enough here comes a kamikaze but unlike usual it's not trying to fly past the willie d to make it to the more valuable ships no this kamikaze is coming for them now, I've heard conflicting accounts as to what type of plane this kamikaze was. I've heard that it was either an Aichi-style dive bomber, commonly referred to as a VAL, or a Mitsubishi Zero. Now, I don't know why they called the dive bomber a VAL, but I believe they called the Mitsubishi a Zero, because Zero was the numerical representation of how many times these planes made a successful landing on average. Either way, it's coming right for them, so they open fire with the anti- ah! <laughs> Good old kamikaze jokes. Um. I love him. He is awesome, dude. That's why oh. I've never never bought a Mitsubishi car, and I don't know anyone who owns a Mitsubishi. Oh, man. <sighs> These planes made a successful landing on average. Either way, it's coming right for them, so they open fire with the anti-aircraft guns. They end up shooting the plane down right in front of them. The plane sinks underneath the water. The day is saved. Hooray. Or so they thought, because the kamikaze apparently hit the water at the angle it was diving at, it then sank below the water and continued to glide until it got underneath the Willie D and then blew up, breaking the back of the entire ship and causing no. it to sink over the course of the next three hours. The entire crew was forced to evacuate. Thankfully, all of them made it out okay. All right, now let's recap, because everybody refers to this story as a story of the Willie D, the U.S. Navy's unluckiest ship. And it is. It was crewed by young men from the very beginning and experienced mishap after mishap and would ultimately meet its demise after getting blown up by a plane that was underwater that it had already <laughs> shot down. If that's not unlucky, I don't know what is. <laughs> However, I would also like to put forward that this has probably been the story of the U.S. Navy's luckiest crew, because nobody else has done this much dumb shit and never had to face consequences for it. Leaving port for the first time, they backed into multiple other warships. Nobody cared. 24 hours into their first mission, they dropped a depth charge when they were supposed to be being quiet, and everybody seemingly forgot about it because it got over shadowed by the fact that they shot a torpedo at the president of the United States. Then, when they were about to face consequences for that, the president stepped in and pardoned them. Then, they went ahead and shot a five-inch artillery shell into the front yard of a base commander's house while he was having a house party full of a bunch of other high-ranking military officials, meaning that that is now two almost accidental assassination attempts on high-ranking people in the span of a year, but that just got swept under the rug. No big deal. Then, when they finally get Get their shit together and start turning it around and being productive members of the military and start really kicking ass what i can only describe as divine intervention steps in and blows up their entire ship with an underwater airplane that they had already <laughs> shot down and somehow all of them make it out completely okay so in conclusion, I guess this has been the story oh. of the unluckiest warship that was manned by the luckiest crew in U.S. naval history. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch. Oh, over the shit. Bang. Out. Uh, is there an ending thing here? Has to be. Has to be. Oh, my God. No way. No. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. The luckiest crew in all of the U.S. Navy's history. Well. Because that's everything they did. Every accident they had was career enders. You bump a ship in port. I'm assuming that's not smiled upon. No. Oh, it's fine. We'll just... We can buffer that out. Just yeah. going. I forgot to raise her anchor. What the f that shit. Under the rug. Great. Top secret mission. Shoot a torpedo at the president. What are you doing? And then the on top. The ice. Well, there's, there's two moments. 
you shoot at the base commander's house. I, I would have loved to have been at that house party. Yo, someone just hit the front yard. What the fuck was that? He looks at it, he's like, what the shit? Fucking <laughs> artillery, dude. He is, uh, oh man. And then the, the uh, dude, they got sunk by an underwater plane. It just kept going. It flew underwater and still hit its target. Oh, that's, that's a Monday. That should have been the USS Monday. <laughs> USS Monday all day. And, bro, <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, my God. I will, would assume that that crew is responsible for how you view the Navy. And they're I probably the great-grandparents of everyone you saw in Annapolis that's like, mine. They're, yeah. Mine. Right. That's what I think. If not, I bet after the war they had some awesome. These guys had some awesome drinking stories. Oh, yeah. These, okay. these guys' drinking stories are not the morbid, terrible thousand yard stare stories. These are like, not the present, bro. What do you just say? Those are the stories that start with, I shit you not. Yeah. Whenever whenever uh, they start with, I shit you not, you better yeah. park yourself right there it's a and good, not move. It's a you good are going to hell man. of a great story. Oh, God. So this ship is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, man. Oh, uh, man. This ship is is my spirit animal. But I like, I like what he said. Unluckiest ship with the luckiest crew. I agree. Wow. Look at an army guy finding common hey. ground with a navy ship. Hey, if it's government run or military run, she's gonna be fucked up. Like that's just science. You have to embrace it. That's where the whole embrace the suck comes from. It's a term that I throw around a lot. So yeah, and you helped name a whole YouTube channel uh, yeah. up, up after it. And so it's just a perfect story. I need. Yeah. I like this. Yeah, Damn. me too. Y'all put some more fat electrician videos to check out in the comments yes. below check out the original one it's linked down in the description and thank you all for watching consider subscribing and watching another video and what else damn um, the man um, unplug unplug and embrace a suck yes see y'all next time later guys